Welcome to a call with Dr. Cook. My name is George Wright and I'm here with uh, Dr. Vaughn Cook. It's uh, February and we've got a fun topic this month. We're going to be talking about cardiovascular wellness. You know, it's funny because uh, a couple of months ago, actually it was November, we actually talked about cardiovascular health and how it relates to wellness and how it relates to the Limbic Arc app. And, uh, you know, here we find ourselves in uh, the month of love. February is, uh, of course, Valentine's Day. And, and, and we had so, such a great response with uh, cardiovascular heart health. And um, I think we talked a little bit, uh, I'd like to go a little bit more into wellness on this side of it, but you know, it's, it's kind of that month and at the risk of being a little bit redundant, I think that there's a lot more that we want to do in terms of cardiovascular health. So um, let's oh, talk. And we have some new things we want to show off. So that's a good place to show it off. Well, we had such a good response, you know, yeah. and yeah, let's, should we do that? There, there are some fun things. So um you know, in terms of uh, cardiovascular health, you think about wellness and you think about, you know, if, if I felt good, if, if I was in a stronger, healthier position, are there things that I would do that maybe I'm not able to do? Maybe I'd go out and be a little more active. Maybe I'd hike a little bit more, or do something with the kids. Um, George, if, if you got more active, we wouldn't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we all want to, to do that. I think that we'd all like to ski a little bit better. I think that we'd all like to go and um, take our life to the next level and, yeah. you know, see something from the top of the hill instead of from the bottom of the hill. And so uh, let's let's tackle it. You know, let's let's make let's look at wellness and let's see what we can do, because any improvement in cardiovascular health literally takes us to another place. So um, even though heart disease is the leading cause of death. I think that uh, a good wellness program with cardiovascular health can not just keep us away from death, but help us to live a little bit better. So, well, and a lot of things happen with with cardiovascular. I mean, it's not just the the terminal heart attack that people need to fear, but you don't get sick cardiovascular overnight. It happens over time, and and so if you can stay healthy, you're more active and. You have a better quality of life. For so, sure. so you're saying it took me 50 years to to get destroyed like I am now. It might take me a little while to to undo that, right? So, yeah, well, you probably undo it in you know five or six years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's uh, the, the the great thing about Limbic Arc is Dr. Cook. We've all got this tool, and we have it here on our phones, and it's a web app, and we have access to it all the time. And the question is, how can we take this to actually make improvements in our wellness? And, and that's what this call is really about, is to try and help people to get more out of their investment. Right, right. So talk to us about Let's dive in. Let's go. So we've got a uh, nice picture of a heart here, but let's move into this power, some of these PowerPoint slides. This is a review. <clears throat> and I like to review this on these calls because, um, you know, a lot of people, when they get into it, the first question they ask is, how does it work? So this is a little bit of detail about how it works and why it works. We live in, a, in our present reality. So if, as it relates to cardiovascular health, if your present reality is your heart is less than what you would like it to be, then you would want a future reality that would be healthier. And you can have that kind of a reality. It's, it, it doesn't mean if I have a some kind of an issue today doesn't mean I'm going to have to live with that the rest of my life. But the choices I make and the directions I take will determine what my future reality is because I have an infinite number of opportunities or alternatives. You know, I could say, well, I want my heart to be better, but, but I really don't want to get up off the couch. I enjoy watching TV all day and eating Twinkies, and so I'm just going to keep doing that. And if that's, if that's your choice... Right. then you're going to have a different future reality than if you actually do something to uh, change yourself for the better. Right. So there we go. We've got multiple, multiple options, and those multiple options are called future-focused vectors. A vector is something that has two characteristics. It has direction and distance. You'll notice that those blue arrows, or whatever they are, shards, <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of those are pointing the wrong direction, and some are pointing the right direction, 
and some take you all the way there and some take you half the way there. So, you know, that's what a, that's what a vector is and a future focus vector is one that takes you into the future. This slide just reminds us that there's an infinite number. And the question is, which one should I choose? Right. Now, fortunately, we're smarter than we think. Meaning, our thought process is fast, and we are smart. We process about 2,000 pieces of information a second. But below the level of this part of our brain called the reticular activation system, uh, that part of our brain actually screens out all the low-level information. It's, I, I like to think of it as the secretary that screens all your phone calls. And the reason you need that is because below the level of the reticular activation system, your body processes over 400 million pieces of information a second. So the frontal lobe of your brain, where you're processing your, your consciousness, 2,000 pieces, the rest of you, 400 million. So take, for example, I'm not consciously thinking about my heartbeat with regards right. to cardiovascular yeah. system. It's all below the reticular activation system, right. and it's just kind of a normal thing that the brain does. And if you get up and start running across the street, your heart will beat faster, but you don't have to think, beat faster, beat faster, beat faster, you know. Right. It, it, you, consciously, we could not process all the information that our body has to deal with. Okay. And fortunately, we don't have to. But the way limbic arc works is we don't interface with the conscious mind, we interface with the part of you that runs 400 million pieces of data a second. And the way that happens is we have in the cloud a database with hundreds of future focused vectors. And you access those either by just turning them on okay. or you can do a spark scan. A spark scan requires two kinds of real-time biometric input. And we use voice analysis, <clears throat> excuse me, for one, and we use a tactile response for the other. So you speak, and then you hit the targets with your finger. And what that does is it creates the catalyst that ignites the algorithm that then runs the scan on those future focused vectors. And each of those vectors will then get a score, a percentage score. Right. And the higher scores indicate that it's pointed in the direction you want it to go, and it'll get you further down the road. I see. Then you go in and select the ones you want, and you activate your info boost, and it sends that information to your subconscious self. And so, that, that happens through the zero-point field. I can see that we've got a little funny E on our thing, but you can read that, activate. So, so in other words, now I, I'm consciously working on stuff. Say, I say I'm trying to exercise a little bit, or I'm working yeah. on my cardiovascular health. But now, at a subconscious level, I can actually um, activate an info boost that will support what I'm consciously doing. Yes, and and you know, to to get into that, we'd need a few more slides that I don't have in this presentation. But that would explain the connection between a, between your energetic self and your emotional self and your functional self or physical self. Right. And all of those things are interconnected. So let's get back to this slide. The, one of the examples here is maybe one of those vectors would be Acer, Acerola cherry. Well, Acerola cherry is good for your heart if you eat them. Right. But what, but what we're giving you isn't the cherry. We're giving you information that has been linked to the cherry. So essentially, we're giving you information. Information is what is conveyed by an arrangement of things. And the arrangement of things that we have is that data in the database. We send it out to you, uh, and your body would then pick up on that. And the, and the application here is um, take the information from Acerola Cherry and use it to improve or to move you along that future-focused vector towards better heart health. Now, another one could be uh, dark chocolate. I, I like the way we're going here. Uh, you know, cherries and Cherry. chocolate. Yeah, uh, we I mean, we're, it is uh, February. That's right. That's right. And El Arjun needs another one. So those just happen to be three that I picked as, as possibilities. Yeah. So you say, all right, I'm going to take the two that uh, are the highest, maybe, and you activate it. And now you're getting the information of those two 
vectors and it's moving you in a direction of a more desirable future reality. Now we've added some things to... Um, okay, this looks very different than... Well, it, uh, yeah, it's coming along. <laughs> I, I love the, I, the as, as we look at the improvements that are happening here, this is great. What we've done is we've, we've uh, created a, a, a way to look at the library a little bit more organ, in a little more organized way. We've added categories. Mm -hmm. So um, what I've got some, just some slides basically walking you through a typical uh, info boost, how you'd set it up. So let's say I want to run the cardiovascular info boost. I would select it, and then I would do a spark scan. And the spark scan then requires me to um, talk first. The spark scan is just literally going to personalize it for you. Well, it does, and it also personalizes it for whatever topic. So in this screen, we've got some instruction that says, talk about yourself. Don't talk about the weather. Don't talk about your, your kids or the dog. You know. The reason we give you that instruction is because voice is topic specific. When I talk about myself, my voice is actually different than when I talk about my dog, as an example. If you want an info boost for cardiovascular, at this point, what you would do is you would talk about your cardiovascular health. Okay. And, and you don't have to say, well, I've got cardiovascular disease, because you may not know you have it. But you just say, look, I just want a healthier heart. So you push the record button and start talking about your heart. But talk about your heart. That's the important thing. And, and, the, and yeah, I mean, clearly you want to stay focused on topic, but it's literally the frequency. It's called a voice frequency pattern recording. And when you talk about heart, it affects your voice frequency, right? It's that's not right. necessarily the words, but it is the frequency. Right. The words, we, the computer does not listen to the words. What you say does, is not important. It's just the frequencies that come out of your mouth. It, we run an analysis on that. And then, of course, you continue and you're going to hit the target. So these little targets appear and they'll happen five times. It'll appear in different areas. I assume everybody on this call has probably done an info boost, but that's the review. You just click it and then... So, well, and then you get to this screen. So here's the, the result of the scan. And you'll notice, if you look down towards the bottom of this slide, it says uh, on this one, uh, L-sutraline was the first thing that showed up. And the score on L-sutraline is 84%. And then we've got uh, bio uh, bio uh, <laughs> bifidobacterium. That's easy for me to say. Uh, and that's 83%. So, so these scores are in the 80%. And people might say, well, wait a minute. Uh, can't I get a, don't I get scores higher than 84%? The answer is yes, and we'll see those in a minute. But for the items that we have organized into this info boost that have a known positive impact on cardiovascular health, okay. this is how they get scored. So it's not the entire library of ingredients. These are just the ingredients associated with the cardiovascular info boost. That's correct. Okay. And so if you scroll down, so I've just scrolled down this page a little bit, and you'll notice that there are 10 items that are automatically by default selected. Okay. And you can go in and deselect any of those, or you can select any more that you want. Just the simple check shows that they're selected. That's right. And then if you scroll down, so this white arrow on the left indicates that now I'm going to scroll down even a little bit further. And when I scroll down further, I get down to where I can see the rest of the things in the library. Okay, so now... You know, there, there are hundreds of items in the library. There are only maybe 15 or so in the cardiovascular. Well, there's actually probably 40 or 50. Oh, okay. There's so a lot in there's the cardiovascular. Quite a few. But look, at the, look up in the screen here. You can see that dark chocolate, that's an item that has a known positive impact on cardiovascular health, but it only scored 5%. Yeah. And there's L-arginine. That's only 5%. So you, and so of all of the things there, you know, those are maybe ones that uh, your body didn't respond most positively to. So right. focus in on the big hitters then is what well, you're saying. Well, yeah. Yeah. So you focus in on the other ones. Now, if you're taking L-arginine, you might say, well, do I need to keep taking L-arginine? Yeah, probably. But, but, you, but as far as this info boost is concerned, it's a low priority. Right. Now, you come down and you can see that this new area, we've got categories. Okay, and this is new. This is new. So we have amino, we have 
All of the amino acids in the library are organized under that heading of amino acids. Okay. I can click on categories and I'll get this and I can go down and click on any individual category and see what's in that category or I can click on the all button there and it will show me the rest of the items in the library sorted by the highest response on the top okay the lowest response on the bottom so let's scroll down and we're going to click on a new category here it's called um, molds and fungi so you'll notice here that's the header okay those all are new items that we put in just recently and these are organized alphabetically they don't show up by scan they show up by alphabetical so you have to scan through it and look and if you if you look down here you'll see there's one in this scan that says uh, 82 percent for Canada albicans the top remember the top one in the cardiovascular was l sutraline and that was 84 percent right so this is almost as high so I've gone over and selected and said okay I'm going to add Canada albicans into this info boost then what I did is I went back up to all and clicked on the All tab. Okay. Now this is not just going to show the categories, this is everything in the library. It's everything that's not already included in the cardiovascular boost. Okay. Okay. And, and it's listed in, in order of response. Of priority there. Yeah. So now you've got lavender, that's at 98%, and papain is 94%. Uh, magnetic North, that's a new one. That's new that's... into the library. That's called an imponderable. And so is broadband emission. That's also an imponderable. Uh, imponderables are um, usually that's, that is referred to a homeopathic remedy that's made from an energetic source. Um, and so we've put those in, a, in, and there's a category in categories called imponderables. You can go in and look at those. You can look at imponderables. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you look at this, would you say... Um, okay, well, lavender is really the highest preference. It's got the highest score. And papain, that's a digestive enzyme. Uh, what about these other two imponderables? Why are they showing up with high scores? And, and the answer is, I don't know. So but, if, if I look at Magnetic North Pole and it's like, I'm not sure what this is, how do you find out what Magnetic North Pole is? Well, you click on it. It's a hyperlink. So you just click on it. And it opens it up, tells you a little bit about it. And there's the uh, broad, definition. Broadband emissions, you know, broadband emissions could be, you know, somebody spends a lot of time in front of a, a uh, or in an environment where there's a lot of electromagnetic wow. frequency. Sure. And it, maybe it's screwing up cardiovascular, and that's why it shows up. But this is not a diagnostic. It's not intended to say, this is what's wrong with you, and this is why. And this will fix it, or this will cure your disease. What we're interested in is improving quality of life. Right. And so... Uh, you don't really have to get hung up with the why did that show up. All you have to do is select it, and then you go back up, you hit your activate button, you set the time, how, how long you want it for. So in this case, it defaults to seven days. I just left it at that seven-day default and hit the go button or the activate button, and it turns on the um, cardiovascular info boost, and that gets us to the end of those slides. So, so... When, when it brings up um, the ingredients, and, and you start with the, the ingredients in cardiovascular, you know, and, and it automatically selects the top 10, uh -huh. and you can deselect some of those or you want. Right. Um, if you select them all, it's just the same as running a cardiovascular info boost without using a spark scan. That's correct. But, but, by, but by focusing in on the highest priority items, um, that really gives um, your body what what it's what it's what it's responding to in the spark scan yeah. the priority. I, my you know my bias uh, the way I use limbic arc is I don't go in and throw in everything, including the kitchen sink. Okay, that was my next question. Why yeah, not just I, use them all? Well, I think it's just too much. And and you'd see that some of those like dark chocolate five percent. Why you know why would I put that one in? Yeah. So uh, I tend to take just the top, you know, three or four or five. And as I sort through the library, I might end up with 10 items in an info boost or seven items in an info boost. Uh, and, and I always have an info boost running. You know, I'll, I'll set them, I'll have one that'll go 14 days. Mm -hmm. So I'll, it's just kind of my, you might call it my constitutional info boost. 
So every 14 days, I'll go in and I do a custom one. I don't pick a category necessarily. I'll do a custom one. I'll pick the top few, turn it on, and away it goes. Wow. So, and then I'll come in and I'll do, you know, you can do three info boosts at a time. The other two, if I, do, if I use more than that one, some, it might be something that's very topic specific. So I may have, uh, you know, a, an issue. Maybe it's, you know, my back aches, or maybe, uh, you know, I had an argument with somebody and I want to have a better relationship with, or, you know, it can be any of those things. It can really be anything. And so I'll do a, a very targeted info boost and I'll talk about that topic. And then I'll select just the top few. I usually don't go down below 95% on those. Interesting. And, uh, and turn it on and, and then pay attention and see if, if the things that you got the info boost going for actually improve. Does the relationship get better? You know, does your back stop hurting? The, the fascinating thing about an expanded library is that, you know, there's more to choose from. And just because there's more to choose from doesn't necessarily mean you should take it all. Right. Just focus in yeah. on what works the best or, or what your yeah. responses, your best responses. So I, 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 think that's, I think that's great. I know that we've had a lot of people that uh, there used to be a little button on there to click all. And, right. Um, I, yeah, I, we took that off because it really is counterproductive. Yeah. It's just too much. It's just, and it's confusing. I mean, people would say, "Well, if you don't want me to push it, why did you leave it there? You know, why'd you put it there?" Uh -huh. um, one thing too, when this info boost is done, uh, and I and I end it, or it ends, or I delete it, I'll get this this rating. You know, it says you want to rate the effect of this info boost. Yes. And it's so stars. It's really easy. You can just click one or five or anywhere in between, and then submit. The advantage of doing that is it then gives us information as to what info boosts are getting the, the most positive reviews, basically. Okay. So I would encourage everybody to do that, too. When, the, when your info boost runs out, take the time, you know, take the, the half of a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's required. I think you have to do it to, to move on. Uh, but, but what you're saying is take it serious because we yeah. actually use that data to make things better. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's a good reminder to think about it. You know, like, oh, you know, did I notice a difference? Okay. And if the answer is, yeah, this is great, boom, give it a five. Well, it's every time every time we go through this, it's amazing what comes out of this. So, you know, my takeaway here is to get specific, yeah, and and to pay attention to to the difference between you know from the beginning to the end. You know, okay. Well, uh, Doctor Cook, as always, wow, that was great. If you don't mind, there are always a couple of questions. We, we do have people that regularly submit questions, and we'd like to get to all of them, but we've picked a couple of them that relates specifically to the topic today. Um, and if you've got just a second, we'll, we'll go through it. Yeah. The first one um, comes from Michelle. And uh, she says, when sharing the web app, I have trouble explaining the science behind how it works. Um, I bet a lot of people feel this way. You know, it's, it's maybe so. a little bit out there and it, just looking for resources. Is there a resource she can refer to or how can we help her explain this? On the website, and I think we have a slide here, we do. There's the website, and circled is that button that says learn more. That's the best place to go. <laughs> okay, all we right. Did, we've got some videos, and uh, I would say go in and look at those. Take the one you like the best, and, you know, because if it makes sense to you, it might make sense to your friend when you share it. But then you could copy the, the URL or the link to that video drop it in an email or text and send it on to your friend and then they could just click on it and watch that okay watch the video so um, you know I Michelle's concern and challenge is not uncommon right it's, well and but but the, the answer is there are resources there just make sure that you go and look at the library um, and, and don't try to make something up just just go and look at yeah. what's there and there are some resources to help you probably more than most people realize well I think it's okay for people to say I don't know how it works, you know, but this is what it did for me. Yeah. I mean, that's a legitimate because you don't have to be an expert about how a cell phone works to use it. I don't know how my cell phone works, yeah. but I, I do know when I use it, I can talk to somebody. Exactly. Though. You get a lot of stuff done. So I think the same is true. And, and we try to, we're, we update these resources on a regular basis. So. Okay. Marva asks, um, can one effectively boost another person 
without their knowledge? And can that person effectively receive benefits? That's an interesting question. It's a good question. The answer is no. Okay. Uh, now, some people might say, wait a minute, I've done that. You know, I, I did a boost on this person and they didn't know anything about it, but they got better. Um, the, the, really, the answer is no. You can't do that. That's you, not the way it's designed. No, you can't, you can't use the zero-point field to control someone else. It just doesn't work that way. You can change yourself, and if you change yourself, it changes your energy posture in the zero-point field, and the universe will adapt to accommodate your new posture. Okay. So in that regard, if you want to change the world, you change yourself. And that's, but that's the only thing you can do. But the intent is to change yourself, not the world, right? Yeah, yeah, and you don't, you don't. That's the, that's the, the effects that, that's. It reminds me of a, years ago, I had a, a young mother who brought her son in. Her son was about nine years old, I think, to my clinic. Mm -hmm. And she, uh, one of the things, we were, we have some technology, and in the technology we've used, we, we've learned that problems that, kids have, if they're under the age of 16, are usually a reflection of the parent. Oh. By the time you get to be 16, you have an ego that's strong enough that your problems become your own. But, but a little kid is going to bond with their mother and their father, and, you, and it, it's kind of like a puppy in a way. You know, puppies kind of reflect their master's energy. Well, this woman came in, and she had this nine-year-old son, and, and she was complaining about him to me and saying, you know, he's just... You know, I don't know what to do with him. He's just out of control. And, and I said to her, well, sit down. and Let's see what we can do to help you. And uh, she was offended that I said that. <laughs> and, 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 and she was offended because I didn't give her the background I should have. Okay. So, but the point is, you need to fix yourself. You can't, and, you can't, and you can't fix somebody else, and especially you know, behind their back, so to speak. Okay. So, so especially so. with emotion. So, so let's say that you have a, a nine-year-old child that maybe is, um, you know, got the cold or needs, flu. Needs a better quality of life. Or yeah. Or <laughs> well. Or or you know, I mean, there's still an info. We have a uh, friends and family plan, right. and you can use it. But but I guess the answer is do it with their knowledge, right, and their consent. Because well, certainly with their consent. You okay. Know. Yeah. But but use the friends and family, and yeah enlist them. You might say, you know, there might be a baby that you want to do an info boost on that doesn't have any ability to participate in an info boost. And you can, you know, you could facilitate that. Right. But, uh, but you know, don't do an info boost on your spouse and expect them to change. So, so if I do a, a calm info boost and intend it towards a political figure, that's probably not going to work is what you're telling me. Well, you might feel more calm. Okay. But see, that would be the approach. You, okay. You know, let's say you, there is a political figure that you that really irritates you. You can do an info boost about that person, but don't expect that person to get the effect. Expect you to get the effect. Uh, okay. Perfect. And and so, in the future, then what I would expect is you'll either not be bothered, or you'll just kind of disengage with you know the irritation goes away. Okay. So. All right, that's uh, Marva. Thank you for your question. Um, just uh, as wrapping things up, um, these I hope that you enjoy these call with Dr. Cooks. It's really a I chance do. to. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you asked. I, <laughs> I, it's it's fun to, <laughs> you know. Sometimes you just want to know what other people are thinking, and and this is really a great chance to do that. And so I appreciate you taking time to do that. Hey, next. Fun. Next call will be in the month of March. It's coming very close, quickly, it seems like. I can't believe we're talking March already, but March 25th at 5 p.m. will be our next call with Dr. Cook. And um, so put that on your calendars and invite people to join. Also, um, customer, we've got such a great customer service department. We do. Park. I, yeah, we do. I can't say enough about it. If you've got questions or challenges, or even if you need a little bit of help getting started or putting an info boost together, give them a call. Um, they'll be willing to help you and they do a great job. And um, boy, they 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 know what they're talking about. They can help you with any of the issues that you have. So please don't be afraid to call our customer service. And uh, I guess just to wrap things up, um, um, we will be sending out a replay link of this presentation a little bit later tonight and uh, we'll put it there on the website if you uh, go and click on the monthly call with Dr. Cook at the top of the page you'll be able to see the different topics in the different months 
and uh, feel free to go through those libraries. There's such great information that comes out of that. So uh, again, just wrapping things up, Dr. Cook, thank you. Um, we're looking forward to a better heart health March because of our instruction here in February. See you soon. All right. Thanks again.